Welcome back, everybody. I'm the host of the most KIR podcast. I want you to like, subscribe, turn on notifications, don't forget to hit that bell so next time we have a video. We like to upload twice a week. We like to live stream once a week. We brings up to us up to three times a week on this channel. You're going to see us all the way live. Down in the description below, you will see that we have a Twitch account. Go ahead and click on it. Go ahead and follow us because on Twitch, every Friday, 7 o'clock, we will be live streaming PlayStation 5 content. Currently, we're playing Demon Souls. Also, on this Thursday on Twitch, we will be live streaming Xbox Outriders Game Pass. We're going to check it out. $15 a month. We're going to have fun with it. But now let's go in and get to this video. As the video said, pretty much as the title goes, which one for $300 do you want to go with? Budget consoles. Nintendo Switch, Xbox Series S. I think they're in the same classification because of the price point. So we must talk about it. Can you, will you please be a be a Nintendo Switch Mario Edition, 35th, red and blue from the box, $300. This is a very nice, beautiful console. It's only $300, you get to play all the Mario games and all the titles that we have on the Nintendo Switch. We're a Nintendo Switch channel and we love, and all we wanna do is play a Nintendo Switch. But this is only capable when docked, 1080, 60 frames per second. Most games that play at 30 frames per second or less. But then we got the newcomer on the block, Xbox Series S. This is the fan. This is the front of it. $300. $15 a month game pass. So you can play all the brand new titles day one. Outriders, MLB, Sony. They somehow rigged something and able to play that. MLB, the show, day one, Xbox. So my question to you is, which one would you get for $300? Because that's what it is. Are you an Xbox, future proofing, next five to six years? Nintendo Switch, version two, which we have the Switch Pro slash Super Switch coming out at the end of the year. And that's gonna be anywhere between 350, 400, or some people say 450. But even if it's at $400, will this little machine, this is the only back part that you really need that's streaming to the TV. Be capable of, I'm sorry, DLSS, deep learning, super sampling, which can upscale to 4K, which is great. But will it be able to look just like this one, 1440p, 120 frames per second. And for some games, 4K 60, depends on the monitor. Of course, 1080, 120, or 1080 60. Will this be able to compete with that? This will be $300. When the Super Switch come out, which will be $400, which now jumps in the realm of PlayStation 5 Digital. And there's no way in the world it's gonna look like PlayStation 5 or Xbox Series X. I, I don't see it. People are saying that, but the reality of the situation is you got your hopes high. You need to shoot low player because if we don't hit that, a lot of y'all gonna be disappointed. And the next question is, how many of y'all willing to sit up there and shell out another Four hundred dollars for games that can be played on this. Also, I mean, think about that for a moment now. Again, we're talking about right now. If you have three hundred dollars, I know that you're going to say, "Well, I have to try to hassle and jump in the line and try to get one of these." That may be true, but depending on which one of these you're grabbing, you may have a hassle trying to get this too. It's thirty-fifth edition. Some places you can find it. Some places you can't. The Monster Hunter's Rise, some places you can find it, some places you can't. Animal Crossing, questionable. But the neon blue and the gray, the original, of course you can find those. But at the end of the day, if you want to play those COD, Call of Duty games, and for the people who are in the gaming, casual gamers, are you just going to be happy with just a Nintendo Switch if you only had 300 bucks? Are you going to be able to be happy with this one for 300 bucks? Granted, it's a home-only console, but but you can do xCloud and all that and play it on your app on your phone. But my biggest thing is for $300, we need to think about this. Is this a better console? And then we talk about $400 for the Super Switch. Now you can play with PlayStation 5 and there's no way it's putting out PlayStation 5 graphics. We're just not being real. Now, for those of y'all who are finesse with it, you will grab both for the 600 brand new, obviously. But for 300, 
which one is better to you. I mean, realistically, $300, and I'm a casual game, I just play at home and not on the go, this is a much better buy. We're talking about Game Pass, $15 a month, AAA titles, day one on this. You're not getting that with this because again, for my son is right, $65, depending on which game you bought, $65, $75, or $105, depends on which one. So let me rephrase that, $59, $69, I think it was $99 for the Deluxe Edition. I mean, $69 for the Deluxe Edition, $59 for the regular, and then for the Nebos was like $99. Or Basil Sphere, $65, nothing wrong with that. Or Mario Odyssey right now, $65, there's nothing wrong with that. But again, 720 in hand, if you're playing in handheld mode, but a lot of the regular gamers play it on a console dock station only. And then that brings this into play for $300. We have to be serious. Which budget console is better for you? The next five to seven years? Or the next couple months that we could be questioning whether or not this is actually worth it? Because again, it's no way that Nintendo has miraculously found the holy grail with this little DLSS technology that's gonna be much greater than Xbox and what Sony's putting out. Because again, at $400, I'll tell y'all rip, go get a PlayStation 5 digital if you can find it. Obviously, you have to chase it down. But that's 400 bucks. That's PlayStation 5. That's digital. 300 bucks. Same classification. So it makes you think, it makes you wonder, it makes you go, hmm, $300, can I future-proof myself? I know people always gonna say, well, this is still not the Series X, it's still not, you know, 4K, uh, 120 frames per second, but really most games on PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X, which I have both, most games are 4K, 60 frames per second. Just be honest with you. So if you got a 4K TV or 4K monitor, six frames per second, you're good, but then my question is, do you want to be at six frames per second or rather drop it to 1440, 120 frames per second? I think 1440, 120 frames per second on my monitor looks much smoother than a 4K 60. Just me. Now, you can be just for yourself and look at it, but how many games are currently 4K 120? Get back with me on that. Comment section, you know, let me know how many PlayStation or Xbox Series X games a 4K 120 currently right now. I'll wait. But in the meantime, this video was about should you get the Switch for a couple months, a future proof a couple years. I'm gonna let you be the judge of that. You could have anywhere else, but you chose to hang out me. I wanna say I appreciate you. I like to upload twice a week, stream once a week. Catch us out on this channel 8.30. We're gonna be playing Monsters Hunters Rise this Friday. Also with a look. Astro Chain Dog. Hopefully we'll get a chance to play a little bit of Splatoon too. So we'll be out there and go get it, baby. I appreciate that. Thank you. I'll catch you on the next one. Don't forget to switch it on. But my question is, is Xbox better for that 300? Check them pockets, baby. You get back with me. Comment section below. Let me know. I'll catch you on the next one.